Today, we're going to show you how to disassemble your forced trolling motor for servicing the trolling motor shaft components. If you're uncomfortable with performing any of the service work yourself, please visit www.garmin.com forward slash dealers to find a certified installer. This video will cover the same disassembly steps for multiple service replacements. You should use this video to get to the part that you will be replacing. Then, you will want to replace the part and watch the reassembly video. Make sure to keep all the parts to be used in the replacement, except for the parts that are included in the replacement kit. First, we will want to disconnect the force trolling motor from power. If you have a power plug, disassemble and remove it. Next, use a number one Phillips screwdriver and remove the single screw that secures the upper tab of the cable bracket to the mount base, and then remove the bracket. Using a 3mm hex bit or wrench, remove the four screws that secure the two brackets to the mount on both sides of the cable channel. Next, pull the power cable out of the channel on the side of the mount. Disconnect the transducer cable from your chart plotter. Then, pull the transducer cable out of the channel. Now, we will remove the shaft cap on the trolling motor. Using a number two Phillips screwdriver, remove the four screws that secure the lid of the shaft cap. Lift up to remove the lid of the shaft cap. Inside the shaft cap, use a number three Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that secure the power cables. Release the latch and gently pull the connectors apart to disconnect the data cable. Damaging this plug can make the trolling motor inoperable. We will now remove the transducer cable from the shaft cap. First, remove the plastic cable clamps that secure the transducer cable to the power cable. Then, straighten the transducer cable so we can pull it through the shaft cap. Push the square grommet from the inside of the outside of the shaft cap and remove it from the cable. Feed the transducer cable through the shaft cap. Now, we will remove the shaft cap from the trolling motor shaft. First, count the number of coils in the cable wrapping around the shaft. Make sure to write this down, as we will want to use the same number upon reinstallation. Using a 4mm hex bit or wrench, remove the bolt and nut that secure the shaft cap to the shaft. Then, lift up on the shaft cap to disconnect it from the shaft. Next, pull the cables from the shaft completely through the shaft cap, making sure to not damage the data cable connector. If this cable is damaged, the trolling motor will become inoperable. Now, bundle and tape the wires together. Make sure to tape the data cable connector to the wires. We will now remove the shaft from the steering servo. For this process, we recommend two people. Depending on the height of the trailer, you may find it easier to remove the shaft if you transition the mount halfway between the deployed and stowed positions. Make sure that the trolling motor shaft is secure before loosening the depth adjustment collar. Then, loosen the depth adjustment collar at the base of the steering servo. When the collar is loose, the trolling motor shaft will drop through the housing. Slide the shaft down and out of the steering servo, taking care to not damage the skeg and transducer or snag the cables or connectors as you pull it through. Now, we need to remove the skeg and nose cone. Using a 4mm hex bit or wrench, remove the four screws that secure the skeg to the propeller drive motor. Next, using the same 4mm hex bit or wrench, remove the two screws that secure the front of the nose cone to the propeller drive motor. Then, using a 3mm hex bit or wrench, remove the single screw that secures the bottom of the nose cone to the propeller drive motor. Now it's time to remove the propeller drive motor. Using the tool included in the shaft and motor hardware service kit, remove the recessed nut that secures the transducer cable to the shaft. Using a ball head 4mm hex bit or wrench, remove the four screws that secure the shaft base to the propeller drive motor. Then, straighten the cables at the top of the shaft and slowly pull the propeller drive motor away from the shaft base until you can see the power and data cables connected to the propeller drive motor. When removing the propeller drive motor from the shaft, you must pull the cables themselves, and not the motor. 
Pulling on the propeller drive motor may cause damage to the cable connections inside the motor. Holding just the cables, slowly pull them through the shaft. Taking care that the ring terminals and data cable connector do not get caught on the top of the shaft. During this process, the power and data cable should pull all the way through the shaft, but the transducer cable should mostly stay in place. Once the transducer cable has been pulled fully through the shaft, pull it through the hole in front of the shaft base, along with the rubber cable gland and recess nut. Now, we will disassemble the nose cone. Using a 3mm hex bitter wrench, remove the six screws that secure the transducer to the nose cone. Remove the nose cone from the transducer. Again, make sure to hold on to any parts that were removed to be used in reassembly. That video can be found here. And that's it! You now have successfully disassembled your force trolling motor to service the shaft components. For more help, please visit support.garmin.com. Thanks for watching.